Okay, but when I open this fish up, look what happens. Hi everyone, welcome back to Art 101. My name is Mr. Franklin and I've got some art lessons today that uh, I want to talk to you about. We're going to be uh, looking at interactive art. What is that you say? Well, it's artwork that the viewer interacts with. Okay, so right now we are going to uh, go ahead and try to make our own interactive art. And this will be something that you can create and uh, be able to hand to your friends or family and, and, and uh, get a response out of them. So let me show you this. Here's my fish. Okay, but when I open this fish up, look what happens. Okay, so we got a little fish there. Let's close him again. When he's closed in, he's just like this little little fish guy swimming around. But when you unfold it, he becomes a little more fierce. And he's going for our little buddy here and trying to eat him. Don't worry, this little guy's way too fast for him. He's going to zip right out of the way. But uh, this is the type of artwork that can uh, just get a response or reaction from a viewer, from the people that are... Uh, viewing your artwork and uh, just a type of interactive art that you can make and have fun with friends and family. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, let me show you one more. You can make them different sizes too. So if you have some index cards, any kind of index card, something like this, sometimes they have the lines on the back. You can use the back side as plain usually. And so this is folded the opposite, or actually this is folded the same way, but if you look at this and you open it up, this guy has a smile. Let's try it again. And I usually like to make these a little more cartoon looking, I'll give you some tips on how to do that. I don't think fish have teeth like that, but it's kind of fun to, to think about. Okay, I'll show you a few more examples of different ones later, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, in order to do this, you're going to need a, a blank piece of paper. Or like I said, if you don't have that and you want to make a smaller version, you can, um, you can use an index card or any paper really that you, have, that you can find. And what we're going to do is, we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and we're going to fold it in half. So we're going to line up the corners. Make sure they're nice and lined up. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get it lined up and then we're gonna put it down and then I'm gonna take my hand and I'm going to crease. Crease the paper, right? So my paper is folded in half. Okay, so once you have it folded, let's fold it one more time. So keep it down, we're going to fold this and we're going to fold it across the same direction and fold it again. Okay, and then we can open it up and we have something like this. We are going to take this top portion here, we open it like this, we're going to take this top fold and we're going to fold it the opposite direction. Fold it the opposite direction. And if you turn it like, you know you did it right, if you turn it like this and it looks like the letter M. You see that? If it looks like the letter M, you've done it right. I guess it could be W too. Okay, so we have our fold now. And now we're gonna start our drawing. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And we're gonna make, for this example, we are going to make a fish. And Finding my fish. Oh, there it is. Let me go get this. Whenever you do a drawing, you want to have a reference photo, something to look at so you can get an idea of what do I want this drawing to look like. So we are using this photo of a goldfish. And I'm going to take my pencil now. We're going to draw this fish on our paper. Um, but the thing is, we want to make sure. We're gonna draw a little more cartoony looking. We're not gonna make it so realistic. So I'm gonna draw almost like 
a half circle. And I'm going to make it look like this. Do you see this? It says up and over and up. So we have the body of the fish, then the tail comes down, and then the tail goes out. And we're going to do the same thing down here, almost exactly the same. Up and over and out. Okay, that's our basic shape of the fish. This could also be a vase too, you see that? Now it's important that you make sure your tail touches the end. Okay, that's for this project, you kind of have to do that. Okay, so now we're gonna make some features for the fish. What do fish have? Fish have a fin usually, or excuse me, um, um, yeah, like a dorsal fin. I guess, I don't know, they call it with a dolphin. They probably call it with a fish too. So I'm going to put a top fin there. And I think we usually have some kind of rec or triangular fin going there. Okay. We don't want to put anything right here. We're going to keep this, op um, keep this plane for now because this is going to be... Uh, it's going to be important when we open this up and keep drawing. Okay, um, we need a mouth. Now this fish is going to have lips <laughs> because it, it kind of makes it a little more funny. I don't think, I don't know if fish really have lips, but this one's going to. Okay, so there are his lips. And remember, it's like half of one on one side of the crease. So here's our crease here, see that? And then the same distance on this side of the crease. Okay. And we're going to give a nice big circle and another circle inside. Okay. Um, and for the, the, the top fin on his back, we're going to put some lines. Now, notice how I'm curving these lines. See how they curve? I'm giving them, there's a called contour lines. It's kind of the contour. Of, uh, it's not just straight. It's not straight up and down. It makes it look a little more realistic, a little more um, like this fin is, is folding back across its body. Okay, and let's go ahead and make a half curved right there for the tail. And then we're going to evenly space out this tail fin there, there, and there. See how I made the fin go this way, this way, and then kind of in the center is that line. We're not going to do anything there. And then it kind of curves back the other way to follow this portion of the tail. Okay? So see how this line mimics this edge of this tail? And then it gets a little straight as it gets to the middle. And then when it comes to this side, it starts curving to mimic this side of the tail. I'm going to erase this line here because we don't need it. But we're going to go ahead and put some lines here on this fin. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, um, we're going to give this fish some stripes. And they're going to follow the curve of the fish. Now, this fish is round, right? It's a round fish. It's not flat. So these little bands or stripes are going to be round as well. So we're going to try to space them out evenly. You see how I'm curving them, almost like a half circle curve? And that gives us the illusion that this fish's body is three-dimensional. It starts helping with keeping it there. Gives it a little more dimension. Okay, all right. So now what you're going to do is we're going to open up our fish. Whoa! Now we have to complete our drawing. Now, um, when we open up our fish, we can go ahead and finish the, the, the mouth there and finish the mouth here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the inside of this mouth connect this bottom portion to the top portion. Now, if we wanted just to put teeth here, like like a person's teeth, we could do that there. That would be kind of funny. Um, or we can do like we, we showed in the, in the beginning. We're going to go ahead and show some sharp teeth. These are curved triangles. And we'll do the same on the bottom. Uh, 
Okay. And we'll go ahead and finish up these curved lines. You see these lines here? We're going to go ahead and carefully. And I like to draw it down. If I want to make a, a straight, a straight line, I like to actually take my pencil, put it on the dot where I want, and then pull it down. I don't want to start here and go up because I don't have as much control. It's going to go kind of kind of crooked. So you want to pull down and connect these lines. There. Now we can go ahead and finish our tail. These are going to be just some straight lines until we get now we can start curving them out again, something like that. That got a little bit weird right here, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. I think I curved them a little bit too much, so I'm going to straighten those out again. Okay, there we go. So that wasn't too bad. I bet now we're going to make, let's make our little fish right in the center here. And you're not going to see this guy when it's closed. But as soon as you open it up, you're going to see him. So using the same shapes that we used before, the triangles and the ovals, we can make a little, little fish guy. And give him a big set of eyes. And he's going to be kind of looking up. And uh, I'm going to have him a little bit of a, a mouth like, uh-oh, uh-oh, and we'll have him uh, with some bubbles, some bubbles going that way, and then some, some motion lines. And these lines just give the give the impression of he's in motion. He's going as fast as he can to get out of the way because this big guy is trying to eat him. And we don't want that to happen. So thankfully he's a fast fish and he can get out of there. All right. So you can see how it doesn't look anything like this, but this just gave us an idea, gave us a start of where to put the fins what to do, you know, we could put another one down here. Okay, so let's add some color. Now instead of just saying uh, this is going to be uh, orange fish, we're going to make it a little more interesting. We're going to make it a striped fish, which as you can see the stripes, but we're going to change those stripes um, some different colors. So the way we're going to plan it out, now you could do it differently, but I'm going to make the stripes warm colors, and I'm going to make the fins and the tail cool colors. Um, so basically, we're going to pick yellow, orange, and red for our stripes. And we're going to pick blue, green, and purple or violet for our fins and tail. So if you notice, um, instead of just saying yellow or orange and coloring the whole thing, we are going to be blending colors and adding colors. And since yellow is kind of the base foundation of a lot of these colors, um, we're going to actually just go ahead and color the whole thing yellow first, at least the stripes on the body. We're going to keep our, keep our pencil going in the same direction as the stripes. We're not going to go this way. By the way, it's always good to have a good pencil sharpener. Be able to keep your pencil sharp, sharpened. Sometimes it gets tricky, and the leads tend to break now and then, but do your best. Ask a parent to help you if you need it, or a guardian, or a brother or sister. All right, so let's go ahead and make this all yellow. I may speed some of this up so you don't have to watch me doing the same thing over and over again.
So the next stripe, the first is going to be yellow, and we'll do something more to that a little bit later, but we're going to go ahead and color in the orange. Sometimes it's um, important you can put a, a piece of scratch paper down and set your palm on the scratch paper so you don't smudge your artwork. Sometimes the pencil might smudge a little bit and make your paper a little bit dirty. So if you feel like you're dragging your palm a lot, feel free to do that. I'm not going to use it today because I want you to be able to see the paper as much as possible. So I'm adding yellow and then I'm layering the orange on top. And uh, oops, I just made a little bit of a mistake. What did I do wrong here? Let's see if I can take this. We're going to take my eraser and just erase this a little bit. We'll be able to fix it later, don't worry. That's supposed to be yellow. But I'll show you how we fix it. You know what? We make mistakes. We've got to learn that in our art. Making mistakes doesn't mean we take our paper and we crumple it up and we waste all the work, hard work that we've done so far. We just learn how to problem solve, right? We just become uh, problem solvers and we figure out what can we do to fix this and make it a little bit better. And so there's nothing wrong with making mistakes because none of us are perfect, right? Um, and so we need to realize that and uh, be okay with it and just uh, think about how we can fix things. So we skip two here, we're going to skip two here, and the last one's going to be orange. Okay, so we have, yeah, we're good there. Okay, so now we can we can add a little bit of, of the complementary color on some of these. Not violet yet, but uh, for our orange. So for our orange, on the color wheel, which I'll put up here, the color that's directly across from each color is its complement. We call that complementary colors. And instead of adding black, we can add the complement of orange, which is blue. And it's going to leave a little bit of a shadow. So we're just on the edges, not too much. We're not going to overdo it. But on the edges of near the lines, we're just going to add a little bit of blue. Now I'm, I'm coloring very light. I'm not pressing down too hard, it's just enough to get a little bit of that blue color on here and to give it a little bit more of a, a little bit of a shadow. Okay.
anywhere where you see a little bit of um, where a little shadow needs to be placed, usually around some of the lines that you made on the edges, make sure you uh, hit those with some of the complementary colors of whatever color you're working on. Um, on things that are, are that are white in color, um, you can add a little bit of blue. Just don't leave them white. Um, maybe a little blue to give a little shadow. I'm using the lighter blue here, but and since there would be shadow underneath where the tooth is going inside the mouth, you want to put a little shadow right there. And then you could follow up with maybe a little bit of a darker blue. We're not pressing hard on this, this type of, of color that's added because we don't want it to be, we don't want them to have blue teeth. We just want them to have a little bit of a shadow looking there. Now we can focus a little bit on the little fish here. I think we're going to make him kind of a greenish fish, greenish blue. So I'm going to start off with a light green and just kind of uh, follow the the lines of the fish. Fill that in there. So I mean, and if you wanted to, you could do a light, uh, a light color of blue in the background. I'm going to choose not to, but you know what? I just realized. I wonder if anyone's recognizing this. I've I've left something out. So if this fish is folded, here we go. Um, um, I don't know. I usually it thinks like there should be some kind of a fin here. I know there's no fin here. Kind of impossible to do that with it folded here, but we might be able to put a fin here. And now here's like a little mistake. Now it seems like how can I do it now that I put these stripes in here? How am I going to add a, a fin? But um, I'm going to take a marker this time. You could use a colored pencil. Now these fish kind of fins are kind of see through anyways, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to put this in and kind of do a little bit of a triangle with some lines here, something like that. And then um, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I don't want to smudge it, but you can, uh, I'm just going to erase a little bit here. and make it fade like it's faded a little bit. So almost like it's a translucent. Kind of a fade there. And then I can take some blue. Since these are usually blue and green, I can kind of just take a little blue and put that on. So it just kind of looks like a see-through type of little fin there on the side. I'm not sure I can remember what kind of fin that is on the side of the fish. I'm sure one of you knows exactly what that's called. but So I think we're about done. We've got our little, uh, our little fish here. And now, as far as interactive art goes, you could hand this to someone and they can open it up. And you know what? I bet they're going to get a big smile on their face. Or maybe they'll even step back a little bit like, whoa, I thought this was a, a little, little friendly fish, but looks like he's kind of hungry. Uh, but uh, something that will uh, draw some uh, a reaction from your viewers. A little simple type of interactive art that you can share with others. I wanted to share a few more with you just so you get some ideas. You don't have to just do fish. Although I'll show you, you know, this one you saw earlier, right, on an index card. And here's a smiley fish. And then I have a, a few others I'm going to share with you. Let's see here. Got to find it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. OK, here's one. What do you think of this one? You know what this is called? That's a hippopotamus. And if you open up the hippopotamus's mouth, wow. Oh, you see what's in there? It's 
a little bird. A little bird, and he's kind of uh, looks like he's made that his home, and he's uh, he even has a light bulb in there. Changing out the light bulb on a little ladder. You know, I got the idea from that from uh, I was watching some uh, show on TV where the hippopotamus in Africa had these birds that they would open their mouths and the birds would just come in and they would eat the bugs or whatever parasites that live in the mouth, and, and the birds weren't worried about getting eaten by the hippopotamus or crunched by the hippopotamus. I guess the hippopotamus is a, is a herbivore, but uh, not, not worried about getting injured. And the hippos liked having them in there because they were getting rid of the bugs and things that were causing them uh, discomfort. So anyways, thought I'd kind of make a little cartoony kind of a play on drawing with that. So you can see how this could be a this little uh, folded type of artwork could be done in a lot of different ways. You could also, here's one. Now, when I was a little boy, we used to have your teachers might, some of your teachers that are old enough might remember this, but they used to have these milk commercials. And the milk commercials would have these little kids that would drink milk, and then they would show, show them uh, uh, a little bit later, how they how they grew because they drank their milk. Ooh. So there we go. This 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 little boy loves basketball. You can see the basketball hoop and the little animals down here. He drinks his milk. He grows and becomes a really tall basketball player. Kind of fun, huh? I'd love to see if you can come up with some different ideas. Try out the fish and see how that works, but then afterwards, see if you can come up with another idea that would uh, really spark your imagination and, uh, and uh, encourage others as well using this folded, fold-out interactive art technique. I hope you like this lesson, guys. I really enjoy uh, being here with you, and I hope that you... Um, create lots of artwork. Don't forget to send them in to me. I'd love to see them. And uh, don't forget, draw every day. Take care.